guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Effie. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some famous faces with rheumatoid arthritis. And for the record, I just wanna say that each and every one of you are stars, so don't worry if you don't have that fame attached to you because to me, you guys are all famous. All right, so stay tuned because that's coming all right up. You may be wondering why I'm even making this video in the first place and who really cares what famous people are living with arthritis or specifically rheumatoid arthritis, but the point is, is I want to raise awareness that anyone can get rheumatoid arthritis or arthritis. You can be famous, you can be considered, you know, not famous and still have it, so it doesn't really matter, arthritis doesn't care. And I came across three articles that were curated early um, last year, I would say like mid-June, and then the other two were in the fall. And I'll link them in the description box below this video so you guys can click on the articles from Health Central, Everyday Health, and WebMD. Okay, so I'm just going to start off with sharing a few. The first one was one of the last ones shared on WebMD's article, and it's Sandro Bordeschelli's, I believe I'm saying that correctly, Birth of Venus. And so this was one of the most recognized paintings in the world. And I'm going to zoom in here because they say that supposedly this is one of the earliest representations of a rheumatoid arthritis. It was painted between 1482 and 1485. So as we zoom in here, I'm assuming when they say it's the earliest depiction of rheumatoid arthritis, they are addressing the hand. Interestingly enough, they said doctors who've examined the painting, especially Venus's hands, which is the model, um, as you guys see here, they believe it was of a girl who was 16 years old named Simonetta Vipecci. I'm butchering that, I know, <laughs> sorry. She was the 16 year old model on whom Venus is based and may have had RA. Sorry for anyone who gets offended by nudity, but it's not my fault. It's the painting's fault, no, but um, this is beautiful. The right hand here, I believe that's her right hand, is you can see like a little like inflamed, but you can see that she has like some form of like hand disabilities. Bent fingers, curved fingers, the other one here by her hair, the left hand, the pinky. The hashtag disabled and cute and disabled and sexy, they were rocking that back in 1482. And I don't remember reading up on the birth of Venus and how this painting could be representative of RA. I wonder if there's a documentary on this out there because I think it would be pretty cool to watch. This artist, Renor, I've heard of him before and I read up on his experience with rheumatoid arthritis. I find it inspiring like these creatives and artists were still able to go on with their craft. As a writer too, like I, you know, have hand disabilities and RAs and impacting my body in multiple ways. It's just inspiring to me seeing even these people long ago when they didn't even have the resources that we have now were able to like go forth with their dreams and their goals. And you know, he's pioneered the impressionist painting during the mid 1800s, okay? So just imagine how life was back when the Venus painting was created and in the 1800s and you were living with rheumatoid arthritis, like that's the dark, dark, dark ages of rheumatology, okay? They sometimes say the 1950s and the 1960s are the dark ages, but I mean, then what is, what is this time period? The caveman ages? I don't, I don't know, you know? Like he, um, it says here, kept at his craft despite having rheumatoid arthritis in his hands. And I think someone had mentioned something like he painted it a different way or he found another way to paint. I don't remember. I don't wanna say like what I heard because I don't know if it's correct. If anyone knows, just comment below because I think he may have like even used another part of his body to paint. I don't, don't quote me on that, but I just remember reading that somewhere. Yeah, there's just like a bunch of like other older actresses that I wasn't aware of. Like this woman, Edith Piaf, she was a famed singer. She's known for La Vie en Rose and she's an icon for France during World War II. So yeah, she's probably been reflected in a lot of movies that I've seen as well, but she had severe RA, I guess. It was made worse by a car accident, it says here and reportedly heavy drinking, okay. It says here, the pain never stood in her way of singing and her career as a singer, and she kept performing until her death in 1963. And this is one thing I've noticed about people 
who live with rheumatoid arthritis and chronic illness and disabilities in general, we have uh, a perseverance about us and a tenacity that keeps us going despite all the obstacles and setbacks and challenges that we face. A lot of these people mentioned in this article, you'll read about them talking about how they kept going at their goals and their dreams, or they may have taken a break and paused because that's what they felt was best to do. And I would highly suggest you guys read through these because you would never imagine some of these people um, would have had it, you know, back then. Well, another one is Rosalind Russell, and she was um, a stage and screen actress for classic movies for like The Woman and the Gypsy. This was another person living in the 1960s during quote unquote the dark ages of rheumatology, and she was absolutely beautiful. She was actually upset that little was known about rheumatoid arthritis, go figure, it was in 1969. She worked to raise awareness and increase funding for research. And I guess there is a foundation created by Congress in her name, Rosalind Russell Medical Research Center for Arthritis. That was created in 1979. I'm not sure if that's still standing, if it's still around, I'm sure it is. And then there are a bunch of other actors and actresses that they list in these articles. Another person I don't recall ever reading about is Seamus Mullen, I believe that's how you say his name. And he um, was one of the finalists in The Next Iron Chef. I know sometimes for me, cooking is intimidating because of my hand disabilities and like just navigating utensils when you need to cook and all that stuff. Like I have to find stuff that's easily modifiable. Props to this guy for doing what he does because it's not easy to cook or work in the kitchen when you have arthritis. Though, I'm sure some people disagree with me on this, that it is easy, you just have to find ways to go about it. I just haven't gotten to that point where I'm like totally 100% confident, but I'm getting there and that's one of my goals that I talked about in my last video. So if anyone has any tips about that, like if you know, you just go into the kitchen, you whip up stuff and you have tools that help, share them below because I want to know. And I wonder what this guy has to say too, but he was quoted saying that, hectic days with long hours on his feet, that's the life of this new chef who owns a Spanish eatery in New York um, called Tuertila. I've never been, so if you guys have been, let me know if it's good. And he does it all while managing RA. He combines medication and exercise to keep his RA calmed down. And then here's another one that was pretty awesome. Christian Barnard, he was a South African surgeon and he earned his place in history when he performed the world's first human heart transplant in 1967 all with rheumatoid arthritis. And it wasn't widely known actually that he lived with RA for much of his adult life, which is interesting. I'm not sure if he kept that a secret or just didn't really disclose it to many people because he was a surgeon and he used his hands. And so you know how that stigma can be um, applied when like you live with a condition, you're a doctor. Sometimes people may not like that. Who knows what they were thinking back then in 1967. He did um, retire in 1983. Um, when the effects of RA on his hands became a, a little too severe. So that's sad, but that's the reality sometimes of RA. And then yeah, in this article they talk about Lucille Ball. We all know her. If you don't know her, she's from the 1950s show I Love Lucy. Tatum O'Neill, I've seen her a lot on social media. She's like a big advocate on Instagram and she shares a lot about her experience. So that's someone I've seen a lot of. And it's nice to see like actors and actresses and just people in the limelight, no matter what they do, even if it's not acting, it's singing, it's cooking, it's being an athlete, use their platform to help raise awareness for arthritis. And that was in the WebMD article. Now I just wanna move on to the everyday health one and just point out a couple people that I also have mentioned in previous videos I've done. Paula Abdul, she was someone I mentioned in my Voltaren commercial where I talk about why do arthritis commercials suck in part one. So she talked about having um, osteoarthritis and I was always confused about her diagnosis because there seemed to be like people saying that she had RA and then she had osteoarthritis, which are two completely different things, which I discussed in that older video that I did. In this article that was dated fairly recently, actually, June 17, 2021, which was last year, they do say that she has both. And then, yeah, we have like a bunch of other um, dancers and athletes like Carrie Ann and Abba. I used to watch Dancing with the Stars a lot back in the day when it was like the first on. And I didn't know about her autoimmune disease. I know when she had stepped back from being like a judge on the show, she had health 
issues and that was like maybe like 10 years ago I think um, I remember that like she had mentioned as a judge to one of like you know the people who were on the show as a contestant that she had to stop dancing because of her um, health issues but it wasn't really disclosed on like national television like what it was and so she's another person that's on social media a lot there are a couple people here who have collaborated with the American College of Rheumatology Terry Bradshaw who's known as um, a famous football player. He was a uh, Super Bowl winning Pittsburgh Steelers. He remember he was one of the people responsible for creating the Simple Tasks campaign for the ACR in 2017. In 2019, I went to the ACR conference in Washington, D.C. And I had like a, created a little uh, mini vlog of my uh, time there. In that video, if you go back like a couple of years, I'll link it below in the description box. You guys will see how I talk about the Simple Task logo. And it was like a little fork with like one of the um, stems of the fork bent. And that's kind of what they came up with. And that was the theme. And that's been the theme for a while now. And it basically just talks about how simple tasks are hard to do with arthritis, whether that is tying your shoe, brushing your teeth, combing your hair, making your bed. So he was responsible for one of those initiatives. And I thought that was pretty cool because I didn't know that. There was another person here too who's also got involved. Jenny Garth from Beverly Hills 90210, which I used to watch a lot too growing up. I guess her five-year-old daughter has juvenile arthritis. She learned that in 2008. She also has partnered up with uh, the American College of Rheumatology to create a public service campaign to raise awareness for Rheumatic Disease Awareness Month. That's pretty cool to see these people get involved in this uh, capacity, but again, her daughter was diagnosed at five years old and she was sick for a month. Following treatment, she's done much better, they say. So that's good to hear. And I haven't seen this show, but for those of you who have, Bravo's Shaws of Sunset, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but Gigi, she came out not too long ago. I remember her talking about it on social media as well. She was diagnosed when she was 27 years old. She actually um, has been a big like voice in the community and she ended up creating like her own cannabis line, which I haven't tried or anything. I don't know if anyone watching has. That was nice to like see her try to create like a solution for herself um, with all like you know, the fame and the money that she has and put it to good use. She says, a lot of people who have it feel ashamed or embarrassed because RA has the word arthritis in it. And that's kind of the debate, like should rheumatoid arthritis have the word arthritis in it? Should it be called a rheumatoid disease? And that's like just an ongoing thing that people are talking about. She's brought that up too. And she says, the word is also the reason so many people don't understand what's wrong with us. It's very individual and it impacts each person um, differently so it's easy for people to judge. You can imagine like how much scrutiny these people get who are in the limelight because on the outside they may look fine and you know what are they supposed to do about it too you know they're just human beings as well. And then the last two people I wanted to talk about is Matt Eisman. I guess he was a doctor turned stand-up uh, comic and uh, actor and he was on the America Ninja Warrior show or he like where he's like I think he's a host where it features like athletes doing like all these like cool kind of uh, very difficult things. Um, but yeah, he's also someone on social media who's like done a lot to raise awareness for arthritis. And he was on the Celebrity Apprentice too. He's just saying like changing my mindset has been important. I've seen him on like, arthritis magazines from the time I was diagnosed. So he's like someone I've seen a lot of, okay? I'm sure you guys have too. So he's pretty popular on the scene. And then another person, Michael Kuluva, I believe I'm saying his name correctly, sorry Michael, but he's also someone who advocates online, social media, but he works with Creaky Joints. I've talked to him a few times, he's a really nice guy. And it's also refreshing to see some of these people who uh, have like the fame attached to them connect with people in the community in such a authentic and respectful way. He's done a lot to collaborate with people in the arthritis community. And he's like someone who would support your post, comment and just like give you like, just the boost you need. And you don't really see that happening much from people who are famous, right? So that's really cool that he does that. It's, it's just down to earth and I like that about him. He's just one of the most down to earth people and he used to be a professional figure skater 
turned fashion designer and he was diagnosed at 28. Again, Creaky Joints has worked with him extensively on a lot of different initiatives and projects. He uses his fashion design background and runway shows to raise awareness for arthritis. He's even featured people with rheumatoid arthritis in his fashion shows the past few years. Last year it was a virtual show and I bought one of his t-shirts too that was created alongside another advocate in the community and it was beautifully done. I love it. I have it actually stored somewhere. I haven't uh, cleaned some of my closet out yet. I know slow turtle motion for the new year but I'm getting around to it. So I couldn't find it right now for this video but I did find a picture of it and this is the one I got. It says fiercely fighting arthritis and there's a bunch of other designs on his website too so you guys can go and support that and you get this really cool card of authenticity signed by him and I don't know I just like love collecting things like that I don't know if I'll ever wear it I probably will but I like to like keep those things like as a keepsake no it's a really nice shirt and it's well made and for a good cause too you know so yeah that's pretty much all I have for this video I hope you guys found that eye-opening in some way where you can see that arthritis does not only impact a certain population or a certain look or a certain person it impacts anyone anytime you can be healthy one day and then be diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis you know just like many of these people were I don't know if there's anyone else that you guys know that I missed and I probably did though like I said I didn't bring up everyone that's in all three of these articles because then the video would be way too long and I just want to talk about people that I've seen a lot of some people I didn't know much about of and just shine a light that anyone can get rheumatoid arthritis all right so I'm going to end this video with the Spoonie Star supporter of the week thank you guys for showing all your love and your support and if you want to be my next shout out in my next video, all you gotta do is stay active on my Instagram and YouTube and I pick someone at random all the time. So with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.